In session 12, learning objective two, we're going to focus on the historical perspective, the historical record. And we're going to look at summary of results, uh, what has happened to stocks and bonds, T-bills and inflation over the past 85 years. In a seminal study by Drs. Roger Ibbotson and Rex Sinkfeld, uh, we see that a dollar invested in 1925 in small company stocks grew to $16,054.70. This, these have been the best performers over the last 85 years. Uh, just below that, we see that large company stocks grew to almost $3,000, $29.82 over the last 85 years. Uh, Long-term government bonds and T-bills grew much more slowly. Long-term governments uh, increasing to about $100. Dollar invested in 1925 grew to about $100, $92.84 by uh, 2010, and T-bills grew to only $20.55. Inflation uh, grew about 3% per year, and a dollar invested in 1925 would have grown to about $12.23 by 2010. Overall, we see that small company stocks grew the fastest to $16,054.70, and T-bills and inflation grew fairly slowly but steadily over the course of the last 85 years. On this slide, we see that long-term government bonds, uh, for the most part, uh, were above the line in all cases over the past 85 years. Um, 1982 was the highest return with 44, uh, plus 44%. Um, and so some years you see that they are negative. You get some negative returns from long-term government bonds. But on average, long-term government bonds would show you an average return of about 6% over the 85 years. On this chart, you see that small company stocks, which we said earlier did the best, averaged almost 17% per year, uh, sometimes very high, very much above the uh, x-axis, 143% in 1933, uh, with some wild swings, negative 30 and negative 60% in some of the years studied by Ibbotson and Sinkfeld, again on average about 17% for small company stocks over the last 85 years. Large company stocks did almost as well. They averaged about 12% per year, the highest return being in 1933 with a return of 53%. Again, some fairly wild swings. You see some negative 20s and negative 40%, but also some very large positive swings, 30% uh, and 60%. And again, that 52% uh, in 1933 uh, was their highest. U.S. Treasury bills were fairly... Uh, slow growing and steady. Uh, you can see the highest point on Treasury bills over the last 85 years was in 1981 with a return of 15.21 percent. Again, uh, these Treasury bills are a lot less risky. These are uh, sometimes known as the risk-free rate, and you see that none of the returns were below the x-axis in negative territory. Upon closer look, we see that Small company stocks were the best over the last 85 years, but until the 40s, they were performing fairly horribly. Large company stocks were leading the way at that point in time. Uh, after the 40s, small cap stocks took off. T-bills, again, very slowly growing and very steadily growing. And if you're risk-averse, this may be a consideration for your portfolio. From a historical perspective, we see that there are some big one-day drops in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, on Black Monday, October 19, 1987, we saw a 508 point loss, 22.6% uh, of the average. Uh, so that's a significant drop for one day. Uh, now there are breakers installed in the New York Stock Exchange where uh, large uh, drops like this will be prevented and halted. Uh, trading will be halted in order to mitigate these great losses. Uh, one other important day to note was after the 9 11. Uh, tragedy. On September 17th, the largest uh, drop in Dow Jones history up until that point, almost 700 points down. But this was only a 7% drop when the markets reopened um, on the 17th, which was after the 9-11 occurrence. Um, markets were closed for four consecutive days. But again, because the average had risen so much, this only represented a 7% drop in stock value on the Dow Jones Industrial Average.